Thank you. All right, uh, I'd like to call to order the board and commission candidate review committee meeting for November, excuse me, for December 13th. Uh, the time is 2.31 and uh, we will do a call to order roll call. Uh, starting with council member Jenny Wook. Here. Council member Robin Denson. Here. Uh, Jeff Langham, Public Works Director. Here. And city clerk Josh Stecker, our interim city clerk Josh Stecker. I'm here. Uh, and then Ben Coronado is our parks commissioner. He's on the line. He's in a car, so I won't ask him to um, acknowledge himself out of safety, but he is present. And um, the order of the questions, I will start off with the first question and then uh, council member Denson, if you'll take the second, council member Wolf, you'll take the third and so on and so forth. Is that acceptable? Yes. Excellent. Uh, and then lastly, let me get to my notes here. Do we have a uh, approval of the minutes for our November 8th meeting? I move to approve the minutes of November 8, 2021. Do we have a second? Second. Council Member Denson seconds. All in favor, say aye. 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 Uh, minutes are approved. Uh, we will now move on to uh, our first interview. I see Amanda Babich is present. Thank you, Ms. Babich, for being Mrs. Babich for being here. Excuse me, uh, uh, Mr. Chair, if I could interrupt for just a moment. Yes, ma'am. I, I would uh, like to acknowledge and thank you for your wonderful uh, position as chair this last year of the Boards and Candidates Commission Committee, and you did a great job keeping us on track, and you will be missed. So thank, thank you very much. It. it was my pleasure to serve. It's been, it's been my honor. Thank you. Yeah. And I've really enjoyed working with all the um, uh, city folk uh, personnel who have been assisting us. Very professional. All right. Um, we now have Amanda Babbage present. Ms. Bab Mrs. Babbage, are you ready? Uh, absolutely. Excellent. <clears throat> uh, we'll start off with the first question. Uh, please introduce yourself and let us know why you'd like to be on the Parks Commission. Uh, well, I, I think I've met most of you in, in person, but um, my name is Amanda Babbage. Um, and I'm interested because uh, I have a background in parks and recreation. Um, I'm a, uh, I live in the UGA actually now, so I'm not a city resident, um, but uh, I know our park system well within the city and, and outside of the city. Um, and I'm just interested in furthering that um, opportunity for people in our community to get out in, um, into our parks and to have open spaces to, um, recreate. I'm interested in conservation. I'm interested in um, utilizing our public spaces to their um, optimal uh, ability and, and what the what those opportunities bring to our community. Thank you. Was I next? I can't remember. Yeah, I can't, can't remember. <laughs> okay. All right. Is it okay that we call you Amanda? Yeah, absolutely. Right. Thank you. Please do. <laughs> Okay. Um, do you have any knowledge of the Parks Commission and its role? Um, I do. I do have some knowledge of the Parks Commission. I, I know that they are, um, it's a volunteer advisory committee to the council. Um, I know that it's selected by members of the council and then I believe your full council does approval, correct? Yes. Maybe. Okay. Um, and that you engage with staff um, regarding your various parks. I know you're doing your uh, parks recreation open space plan right now um, and understand that it's a, that's an advisory council. So uh, one that would make recommendations to your, to your council, um, but not a decision-making board. Okay. So hi, Amanda, how are you? Hi. Good, thank you. <laughs> uh, what is your favorite Gig Harbor City Park and uh, how could it be approved? Um, well, well, hmm. Okay. That's tough to pick a favorite, but, uh, probably the, the Crescent Creek park, um, city, city park as I guess old school folks call it. Um, that's probably my favorite park. I, I think it has a lot of elements that reach different areas of the community. So there's a lot of areas in there that you can have multi-generational use. You can have a diverse group of people there using it. You've got your tennis courts and your volleyball courts and the playground, which of course is 
uh, special for my children. Um, and then I love the picnic shelter. I know so many people that have held events there, birthday parties or even sports group parties. And so um, I know how important those spaces are for community groups. So I think that's that's probably my favorite one. Plus I love the creek that runs through and, and all of that, so. Any chance to improve it? Any, you got any ideas to how to improve it? Oh yeah, you know, I think, I think parks are always evolving. I, I mean, maintenance and operations is always a, a huge part of what you do on an ongoing basis. And so those th things like picnic shelters and playgrounds have a, um, a life span. Um, and so those need to be replaced at different times. And I um, typically they're put on a schedule. And um, so, yeah, I think there's some great ways to enhance what's already there. And I'm a, I'm a big proponent of a uh, community process. So I always like to engage community members when and where appropriate. And I think um, finding out what your community wants in that use is the most important thing. Um, so that that's more uh, the position that I come from, but I think off the cuff, yeah, I think you could um, do a refreshing a little bit of the picnic shelter area. I think there's some um, more opportunities to uh, sort of engage the creek and that view that viewing area there, um, and maybe tying in some of the other elements. You know, just a, just a little bit more. I think you know, getting some more walkable areas so you can get from one area of the park to the next. So, you know, the parking lot kind of divides your tennis courts with your playground and the the open lawn area. So I think there's some some potential areas for improvement. Thank you. Uh, Amanda, what do you feel are the major issues the Parks Commission should be focusing on? Um, well, I think uh, planning for the future. So I, I know the pros plan is something um, obviously you're doing right now. Um, and I think finding those alternative funding sources, you know, seeking out those grant opportunities, um, both from federal and state opportunities, but also maybe some of those public and private partnerships that would or could, could potentially be beneficial. Um, I think working with other agencies um, to help improve the, the comprehensive park system and, and how, that, um, how that can benefit the community as a whole. Um, so I, I really see that as, as the primary uh, the primary role is to listen to the community, represent the community, and um, and help provide that input to the council. Thank you. Okay, this will be an easy one. The Parks Commission meets monthly on the first Wednesday at 530. Do you have any other commitments that would keep you from attending these meetings? Um, I, I do have other commitments, but not that would keep me from attending uh, the Wednesday meetings now. Okay. <laughs> and our final question is, do you have anything you would like to add or any questions for us about the Parks Commission? Um, sure, I, I would love to know from uh, these the council members perspective, actually I'd love to hear from staff as well because I, I always value that as well. Um, just what direction do you see your park system going? What are some of the goals that, that you have for, um, for the city's park system? I guess that's to anybody. <laughs> So I think one of the things that's coming up uh, next year, hopefully, is a visioning plan for Crescent Creek Park uh, uh, and figuring out what our citizens would like to see about the Masonic Lodge. Right. You know, if they want it kept and what, how they'd like to use it and, uh, and, and those types of things. So, so that's one thing that I'm interested in finding out about. Yeah, and I think that we... Um are wrapping up or I guess partway through at least our pros plan. So we'll be looking at that. And like you said, we'll be listening to the what the community wants for its parks. I was really excited to hear about the community wanting more trails and open space, but you know, there's a variety of things that the community is excited about. And I know our parks chair, Ben Coronado is on. So he knows that pros plan more than anybody. He's been very <laughs> instrumental. <laughs> It's true. There was a lot, a lot of, a lot of um, conversation about the, you know, the connectivity and building up the trail system, and you know, seeing what can be done with, uh, you know, expanding that. And you know, there seemed to be a lot of interest in that from the surveys we did. And uh, for myself, I'd like to see more tables that have access for handicap for people who are in wheelchairs, uh, and maybe uh, better access for people um, with disabilities to get into our parks and utilize them. And then also, um, I, if you're familiar with Fox Island Community Center, um, they have a little kind of, it's like a, a Sado trail that goes around the back of the property, but they've got a bunch of uh, stretching um, 
devices, which are just basically some wood and a, a metal pole. And I'd like to see those, something like that kind of spread out throughout the, the town so that people who walk uh, can stretch their back out and have various different uh, angles to do that. Because as a walker, I always like to get a good stretch on my back. It always helps with my walk. And I think it would give people a reason to get out and walk and, and go a little further or maybe take a different route. They say, hey, maybe I want to stretch this part of my back or, or whatnot. I just I, I have gone over to that community center and utilized that equipment. I think it's a really cool idea. It's really cheap looking. Again, it's just a couple pieces of wood, some probably some cement foundation of some sort, and a metal pole. So that that's my two cents. I like seeing that too. I think that'd be great as I walk around. Uh, so uh, Josh, correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe we have two positions we're trying to fill. Okay, so I'm also assuming that we'll have an answer for uh, Amanda either sometime this afternoon or by tomorrow. Yeah, probably by tomorrow. I can notify all the candidates. Okay. Uh, well, Amanda, thank you for your time. Is there anything else you want to leave us with? Um, I, I, think you, I think we pretty much covered it, but thank you all so much for your time. Um, and I look forward to uh, seeing you out in the community. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Thanks, for Thanks Amanda. Thank Thanks. Have a good evening. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Hey, Jeff, I have a quick question while we're getting to the next person. Are you guys planting redwoods in the tree in the parks like Donkey Creek, um, Cormac Forest Park? That's not our park, but. No, that's not. Um, we have planted some redwoods. Uh, last time we planted them was, I want to say 2017. Okay, because Rachel Easton of Harbor Wild Watch says she's noticed some redwood trees that, have, trees that have been planted in the local parks, Donkey Creek, McCormick. She's like, she knows they're planted. She didn't have a problem with them. She's just wondering if there's like a vigilante redwood planter. <laughs> <laughs> so I said, I'll ask. I would... <laughs> you know, what, what spurred some of this on was, well, this is a couple things, but one of them is the laminated root rot that we were seeing in uh, Grandview Forest, because it's my understanding, though I'm not a biologist, that uh, redwoods are not as susceptible or not susceptible to laminated root rot. So it, we need to balance our forests out with their variety of species to keep this uh, laminated root rot at bay. Uh, but also due to climate change, that they are less susceptible to um, some of the impacts to climate change. They can handle higher temperatures is my understanding. Uh, that was a recommendation that was provided to us. Gosh, I wanna say 2016, Katrina would know more. She was uh, working with the person who planted those is when she was the parks manager back then. But you said you haven't planted any since 2017 and you think you, we probably did the one in Donkey Creek Park then. I'm pretty sure I, uh, I could find out from our crew, they would remember. Or I can ask Katrina. Just thought since I was on with you, but I'd ask. <laughs> okay. Uh, and as our next, um, applicant, God, I want to say contestant, uh, joined? Not yet, no. Um, one thing that I'll note just on our applicant list, two of them, Amanda, who we just interviewed, and Stace Gordon, who's our last interview, they both live in the UGA. Um, Parks Commission can have two UGA members. And uh, now that Ben is not in the UGA anymore, we all of our current Parks Commissioners live in city limits, I believe. Okay, so we so can't right. appoint two UGA members. Okay. So there should be no restrictions on addresses for any of the any people we're interviewing today. Good. Vaguely remember a conversation about the Redwood and Donkey Creek. Vaguely. Yeah. It was a while ago. Yeah. Someone uh, pro provided us with the trees. I don't even think, I, we might not have even purchased those. Somebody, I think, provided them to us, wanting us to plant them. So. And they, weren't they like sizable saplings too? Weren't they like six footers? Or they, were they? I, I don't know if they were six. They were, they were more than just, you know, two inches, three inches high. They were significant. Yeah. And then are we putting point, more in? Not no plans at this time, though I would be curious to hear input from folks about whether or not that's a good idea. Well, remember, if it's, uh, for climate change, if it's uh, beneficial, we certainly want to have something that's uh, going to be lasting for sure. Yeah. Yeah. 
that vaguely remember uh, Michael uh, Councilman Perot doing in like an Arbor Day planting as well that kind of incited with the Parks Appreciation Day, I think, where he would take a couple yeah. hundred saplings and do those in the parks. Yeah, he did. He Every year that they had Parks Appreciation Day, he seemed to come up with uh, a great source for a variety of evergreens. Yeah. Let's not overlook uh, Johnny Appleseed's lesser known brother, Ronnie Redwood, who has been <laughs> spreading trees throughout America. <laughs> okay, uh, looks like Georgina maybe has joined us. At Georgina, if you're on the phone line, you'll have to unmute yourself to speak. I think to do that is star six, or maybe it's star nine. I can't remember off the top of my head which one that is. Uh, Mrs. Armstrong, if you can hear us, we cannot hear you or see you. Uh, we need to have you unmute. If you can press star six on your phone, star six will unmute you. And do we know if this is Mrs. Armstrong or maybe this is someone else who's coming in for the lobby ahead of time? Let me double check. I can't see the full phone number. Yeah, he's gone now. Wrong, wrong number. That looks like her number. Let's, maybe she can try to get back on again. Mrs. Armstrong, can you hear us? If so, uh, there we are. Hello? Hello. Oh, finally, it just was not working. <laughs> and I tried to go on Zoom and that wasn't working either. So here I am anyway. Yay. Excellent, excellent. <laughs> uh, welcome, thank you for joining us. Uh, do you mind if we call you Georgina? No, that's perfectly okay. Excellent. Uh, Georgina, we've got some questions for you, and uh, we'll go ahead and start off if you're if you're ready. Yes, certainly. Excellent. Let me just scroll down here. Uh, go ahead and please introduce yourself and let us know why you'd like to be on the Parks Commission. Um, my name is Georgina Armstrong. I live in Gig Harbor, North Gig Harbor, and I would like to be on the Parks Commission because I've been interested in parks all of my life. In fact, they've played a very big role in my life. I grew up in London, in the park system in London, and um, was, was very fortunate to have that in my life. I uh, also raised my children in Park and Rec, uh, as well as my grandchildren uh, have gone through lots of programs and enjoyed the open space of Parks and Rec. Um, and I worked on it also in Carmel, where I lived in Carmel. Um, I worked with the Forest and Beach Commission and worked a lot on the parks. It's just always been a part of my life, so I'm very interested in it, and it feels like a good fit for me right now. Thank you. Hi, Georgina. This is Robin. Hi, Robin. Hey, so um, my next question is, do you have any knowledge of the Parks Commission and its role? Very much so. I know it's an advisory uh, group, and it advises the council on issues of parks, recreation, and open space. Uh, the amenities that are being offered um, and the programs offered within those amenities. Um, and also um, as an advisory group, it also meets in joint sessions quite often with the council, which I think is very good. 
Um, so that's basically what I know of, um, of the Parks Commission. Thank you. Hi, Georgina. This is Jenny Wook. Nice to meet you. Hi, Jenny. Nice to meet you. What is your favorite Gig Harbor City Park? Why? And how could it be improved? Uh, well, that would be Austin Park and the Twalcuff Estuary, as it's now been renamed. Um, I did watch the video of a very long meeting in February about the renaming. I think it was like a three hour meeting and boy, was, it, was that important. It was very educational. Um, and I can see now uh, the, how it's transitioning. I liked the video, um, I mean the audio uh, buttons that you can push to get the information on the history and how to pronounce the words. Um, and it's a, a lovely spot and you can really feel what it might have looked like back then uh, because it's not spoiled yet and hopefully it won't be. <laughs> um, and I think tribes really understand uh, better than we do about sustainability. And I think that um, there isn't much that needs to be added there, maybe some native plants um, and of course the sculptures coming in and then I think it'll be perfect. Uh, you can really feel the the roots of, com of um, Gig Harbor there, very much so. Yes, we're all excited about that for those very reasons, actually. So thank yes, you. Yes, yes. Yeah. Great job. Okay, Georgina, uh, what do you feel are the major issues the Parks Commission should be focusing on? Um, well, the survey of the pros plan update, um, I think identify and identified the three. Um, and the first would be connectivity. Um, I live in Gig Harbor North and it doesn't feel quite as connected as other areas of the city. I would like to see the, the trails connect through uh, from north to south and even east to west. Um, it also encourages people to leave their vehicles at home and I think they want that. That's you know the feeling I get from the survey. Um, maintaining the parks and also finding the right amenities. If, if the parks don't have the right, right amenities or they're underutilized, then we're going to find they're not being used. And if they're not used, they don't feel good. Um, Shore Park is a case in point here. Um, Shore Park is not very well maintained right now, but also that's because it has issues. It has issues that go back to the construction of the park. Um, and we sit on hard pan. And so that is, that is uh, a challenge. I, I think it can be done, um, but once that park has an amenity that the neighborhood can appreciate and wants, uh, then I think it's going to be utilized very well. Uh, so I'd give that as an example. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, let me switch back to my questions here. This is Robin again, and an easy one for you, Georgina. The Parks Commission meets monthly on the first Wednesday at 5.30 p.m. Do you have any other commitments that would keep you from attending these meetings? No, no, in fact, it would go straight on my calendar, so I wouldn't have a problem with that at all. So Georgina, our last question, do you have anything that you would like to add that we haven't asked you, or do you have any questions for us about the Parks Commission? Um, the only thing I would add is um, my experience. I have served on an advisory board in Carmel. Uh, I found that uh, extremely rewarding uh, in working with city officials and with staff and with residents. Um, the only other thing I would add is I would like to see uh, Gig Harbor have a forest management plan. Uh, I think it would probably be a good idea and also a, with a GIS system so that we can track the condition of the forested areas and make sure that we don't have too much ladder fuel and we understand the canopy that we have left and therefore that can advise us um, as to what how much canopy we really need to replace. I know we've lost an awful lot. Um, so that would, that would be it, I think. I do attend Parks Commission meetings, so I'm very familiar with them. Um, and I've been familiar with them in Carmel in the past too. And, you know, they're both small cities. I'm, I'm used to a small city that sits by a body of water and that depends on tourism. Um, and also depends, of course, on property taxes um, and also values its history. So I'm very familiar with that. 
Great. Thank you so very much. You're welcome. And uh, that concludes our questions. We uh, have two positions we need to fill, but we should have an answer for you uh, by tomorrow. Josh will be uh, connecting to out to you. Oh, great. Well, thank well, you. Thank for your you. Time. Thank you for this. Thank you for this opportunity. We appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you, Georgie. Bye bye. Thanks, Georgie. Bye bye. Thank you. Ben, if you parted your hair, what was going on there? I said, if you did, you'd look like John Ham. Like do the greased over. I don't know about that. It's a stretch, but thank you. <laughs> I'm not saying you should, but if you wanted to be him for Halloween, just part it a different direction. It goes, it goes the madman. Oh, yeah. I watched that show and uh, was it AMC? That was a pretty good one. About the designers back in the 60s. Yeah. Did I hear that the police had some activity last night as well? Okay. Caught a car prowler or a really? prowler. Where? Uh, down by the post office. They had to tase him. Yeah. He rammed a, car, a police car. And uh, I don't know if there was a police foot pursuit. Um, Jeff's nodding yes. Yeah, there but was. Some, they some, apprehended him. Yeah, yeah they, they caught him. Good Carver police always gets their criminal right. and gets them out of here. Did you hear about that, Ben? Was it on the news or? I, I, they were talking about it before I uh, showed my video. Oh, I think I joined in a little after you then. It was on Facebook. Yeah. Oh. Right. Chief put it out on his Twitter account. That's the way to get police news is follow the chief's Twitter account. All right. You know, I'm not on Twitter. I need to be on Twitter, I guess. I don't, the whole Twitter, Twitter thing is sort of. I still don't get it. I just. I don't it, get it. I do. I follow, like, I'm on it. I follow one person. I can't figure out how to, like, see the comments under what, I mean, and I still don't understand the hashtag thing, like, like how that all works. I'm probably overthinking it. <laughs> <laughs> I think a, we need to a have a lesson. One. I'm the complete opposite of that. I can do anything on Twitter, but if I go onto Facebook, I'm immediately disoriented and have no idea what's going on. Oh my gosh. Types of brains, maybe. But everyone's like, you need to go on Twitter. I'm like, I don't understand how to get things where they're supposed to be. And Josh, we should have a class. We should, I know. Well, I think the young folks are into Twitter, aren't they? Hmm. Mm. It's mm. just there's just so much. How do you keep all this stuff updated? And I don't do TikTok at all. I don't even know where it goes. I don't. I don't think we need to be on TikTok yet. <laughs> <laughs> Although people are making a lot of money on TikTok, and I'm like, really? How do you do that? You know, these kids that have like millions of followers, and they're doing just silly things like stepping on pine cones, and I'm like, I could have done that. <laughs> And doesn't it like go away self combust after a certain period of time? Ben, you're young. How does oh, that work? <laughs> How's that work, I, Ben? Not on Instagram, not on Twitter, not <laughs> barely on Facebook. <laughs> uh oh. It's We're so not going to find any help know. from him. It's a big time investment to do all those. <laughs> yeah. It is. And then they're like, oh, don't worry, Robin. You can hook it up so that you can post on Facebook and it'll like post on all these other things. I'm like, yeah, but what if I don't want to post it on all those other things? What if, you know, because my Facebook posts are long and I know your Twitter post is supposed to be short. So how does that work? And... <laughs> I'm asking the know. wrong people. It's a hypothetical. <laughs> I'm going to write you a letter, write you a check. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> I know in my real estate, so many of my young clients, they don't have checks at all. I'm like, don't you even have like starter checks or something? No, they've got to go to the bank for an earnest money check or they can wire transfer. But sometimes, sometimes inspectors don't take credit cards. I'm like, 
So they show up with cash, which is fine, but no checks at all. Oh my golly. I still write checks to a lot of, I mean, I try and automate stuff, but I still send checks to certain entities. I, mean, I, I don't, I, I finally got on board with uh, automatic payments. So, and I rarely write a check. I wrote two today, but I don't hardly ever write checks anymore. And I don't, I used to carry a check with me, at least one. Yeah. I don't even do that anymore. I have gone that way, but I don't even know that that's a good way. Checkbook's next. That <laughs> <laughs> <Out of> here too. <laughs> oh my gosh. It looks like Mr. Buckley has joined us. Yay. Mr. Buckley, if you can hear us, we need you to unmute. You can unmute by pressing star six on your phone. And Josh, is Mr. Buckley, is he um, a city resident or UGA? City, I believe. Uh, Mr. Buckley, maybe you might be having some difficulty. If you can hear us, you need to hit star. What was it, Josh? Star, star, six. star six. If you can hit star six, that should unmute your phone. There, there we you go. go. There you go. Uh, having a little technical difficulty here because the um, I cannot launch the uh, meeting from Zoom. Okay, I have no idea what's going on. Josh, that's something you'll probably have to look into. Yeah, let me. But we've got them here. Yep. So don't yeah. hang up or anything. We you're you're good to go unless you want to have video. I don't need video. Okay. Um, but it would be nice, but it's just not important. Um, although I do a lot of meetings by by teams, and I've used, we used to use Zoom, but um, for some reason this is not uh, is my internet connection or what? It's because it's raining, just about, or and it's raining. That's the reason why. <laughs> it seems like when it rains, sometimes we lose internet and stuff like that. Anyway. Anyways. Well, thank you Hello. for giving us your time this afternoon. My name is Spencer Abersold, Council Member Abersold. Um, do you mind if we call you Joe? I prefer it, please. Very good, sir. Um, we'll go ahead and start off with the first or first question. Um, please introduce yourself and let us know why you'd like to be on the Parks Commission. Um, well, I'm Joe Buckley. Um, and the reason why I want to be on the Park Commission is because I want to, you know, um, help out um, uh, to help enhance the community. Uh, so that our um, grandkids and uh, and uh, and everyone like that can really enjoy the park systems as as much as they can, uh, and make it you know a place where they want to go, rather than sometimes you know your kids they don't want to go to the park and stuff like that. So getting them away from the the uh, technology that they're surrounded by, you know, while they're inside their houses, but even to get them out on a day like this in some way that they can you know find a way to to release energy. And of course, uh, other reasons are to help, you know, the environment uh, and everything like that. Thank you, sir. Uh, you can know my background is I am a landscape architect. I am still registered in another state, by the way. Okay. All right. Thank you, Joe. My name is Robin. Um, and I saw that you're a landscape architect, which is really, really a, a great skill for a position like this. So my question is, do you have any knowledge of the Parks Commission and its role? I have uh, from other jurisdictions. I understand the uh, the um, the uh, working knowledge of other uh, municipalities. Let's put it that way. And could you just describe for me how those work so that we? I'm sorry, I think I cut myself well, off. Could you describe kind of how the how your understanding of other municipalities? Because it's probably similar. It's probably similar. Whereas, you know, um, they're going to make recommendations to the to the city board as to the directions in which they want to head on different projects. I, I have been noticing the um, one of the projects that's going on in uh, Gig Harbor 
is the one with the culverts uh, in regards to um, the salmon and how much that's going to impact, um, you know, the park systems. I don't know, um, but I think it's an opportunity that, you know, um, I know that uh, in Seattle they have some some parks where they can see uh, the salmon running uphill or simulations of it. And it's a great learning tool for um, for the uh, for the young people uh, to learn about their environment. So um, so it's really uh, you know um, more or less a, uh, um, at least in other areas when you have this type of board it was to, you know to make recommendations as what could happen uh, within the park system themselves. I know the last project I did um, uh, where I was last it was um, um, a, a privately funded. Um, uh, uh, addition to the uh, existing park um, that uh, went forward uh, based on some recommendations of the uh, of the board. Hi, Joe. I'm Jenny. Nice to meet you, Jenny Wook here. Thank you. I have a question for you. What is your favorite Gig Harbor City Park? Why, and how could it be improved? Um, I don't know off the top of my head what the name of it is. It's the one as you come across on um, Harbor uh, View um, that has the ship in it that we go to quite a bit with the grandkids. Um, it's the um, um, it's a park that has um, um, oh, what is it the um, the ship there? It's uh, the the um, um, Oh. So this an is old Crescent, pavilion there. Yeah, this Crescent uh, Creek Park or City Park. It's yeah, it's, it's okay. Crescent Creek Park. That's the one I'm thinking of. Yeah. Um, the other one we end up going a lot because we have, uh, you know, my daughter has a um, uh, a dog. Is the one that's the um, uh, loop around park. Um, I think it's in Cushman uh, is what it's called, I believe. Uh, park uh, that the dogs have the dog runs uh, around the the entire facility, which I think is a really good idea. And then they have the uh, enclosed area uh, and we take them over there, uh, you know, um, quite a bit. And then um, uh, one of the other ones um, uh, is the, well, the, the small little vest park that they have right there in town where you have that, um, um, I just did it uh, a couple of years ago where you have a view of the, of the water. Um, and I don't know the name of the parks. I have to, I have to tell you that right now. Um, we've only been here about two and a half years altogether. And with COVID, you know, um, things have been locked down pretty, pretty tight. And so, um, you know, I don't move around a lot other than, you know, going to outdoor spaces. Sure. Um, but you let's, know, take Crescent, let's take Crescent Creek Park. That was your first favorite one. Uh, is there anything that could be done to improve that park? Well, if I was going to say one thing, um, the the facilities could look at some maybe some improvements so that people won't find them so you know perhaps um, as rustic as they could be. Um, that's a little bit of a you know uh, a maintenance issue more than anything else. Um, you know uh, perhaps you know uh, better visibility in some of the parks. One of the things I've noticed you know or we were taught you know, years ago um, in school is make sure that all the um, play equipment has a high visibility to all areas so that you don't have any nooks or crannies. Um, you know, um, as far as the indigenous plant material, um, you know, um, I think we're in good shape uh, as far as the canopy goes there. And that's one of the things I talk about is canopy coverage. Uh, they've done a good job with their canopy cover um, in the parks, um, uh, to be honest with you. Um, you know, as far as you know, other things that could be done um, with some of the, uh, I understand that, that Pierce County is going to be um, purchasing some additional uh, um, uh, land in Gig Harbor, or at least that's what I thought. And that, you know, putting in some facilities like some ball fields for the kids um, would be nice, uh, you know, to have a place like that. Um, you know, both, uh, you know, soccer fields for the uh, for the soccer players, uh, softball players, which, uh, you know, uh, you know, are different than baseball uh, and having those type of, you know, recreational facilities, you know, for the kids outdoors. Um, 
you know, and one thing I've noticed out here that I think that uh, the only place that you can go swimming if you're an adult is the Y. I don't know if they ever thought about putting in something like a um, uh, a, um, a rec center um, um, where you have an indoor swimming pool for other people, or because I've seen the ones over at the Y is is pretty pretty packed a lot when uh, they go there. According to my uh, my uh, daughter who has uh, two kids, which are my grandkids that are being raised here in Gig Harbor. Um, Great answer. So. Thanks so much. Joe, back here. Yes. Uh, well, shoot, I just lost my, my questions here. I'm sorry, Brace, bear with me. Uh, what do you feel the, what do you feel are the major issues the Parks Commission should be focusing on? Hello? Yeah, I'm thinking. Oh, okay. Um, the the main issues of a park commission is to be focused on the uh, the park itself. Number one, um, figure out you know or try to find ways to um, uh, find out what the people uh, of the community are looking for. I know I've done some outreach on projects uh, that I used to do. Um, just determine you know how they and and you know what they want to use the parks for. You know, do they want some more open spaces or do they want, you know, perhaps, um, um, uh, you know, like a, uh, an Arboretum, for instance. Um, there are some parks uh, like that uh, over in Tacoma, um, I think, uh, where they have that one um, that's near the zoo that uh, I don't even know the name of the Arboretum that they have there. That's quite nice. And it seems to be used uh, quite a bit. And um you know, so that activities can be, you know, uh, scheduled around those, you know, um, type of parks and so that, you know, we can start utilizing the the outdoor spaces a, a lot more. Um, I know that, um, you know, uh, when people or when you when when areas do that, they seem to generate not only activities for the community, but revenue because they can be set up for venues that will help offset the cost of running the parks. Okay, great. This is an easy one. Um, the Parks Commission meets monthly on the first Wednesday at 5.30 p.m. Do you have other commitments that would keep you from attending these meetings? Just dinner. <laughs> good for you, Joe. That's good for good you. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Joe, I have the last question for you. Do you have anything you'd like to add or any questions for us about the Parks Commission? I'm assuming this is a non-political situation and that we're all looking at this from a standpoint where we're just trying to help out the community. Um, and, uh, and uh, you know, that's pretty much it. I'm not looking at this from a standpoint of a stepping stone for anywhere or anything. Uh, I grew up in the industry. I like the outdoor environment. I spent my entire life in the outdoor environment. Uh, I've come here to retire and I wanna be able to walk around in parks rather than hardscape uh, sidewalks. So my question is, is this a political situation? If it is, I'm really not interested. Oh no, not at all, not at all. No pol no political situation at all. Yeah, because that's not what I'm looking for. Sure, I have another question for you that's a little out of left field. We have a design review board uh, as one of our volunteer committees and we're always looking for a landscape architect or someone with that uh, training and ability. Is, would you be interested in, in uh, applying for that commission as well? Uh, yeah, because I'm going to be, I think I'm going to be retiring here soon. Um, and when I say soon, I mean when I get fed up with work, it's put it that way. <laughs> uh, Me too. <laughs> Uh, Joe, th Joe, thanks yeah. so much. Great, great, good, good answer. Thank you. Yeah, and Joe, so we have okay. two positions we need to fill. Uh, we will have, we've got five candidates we're looking at today. We will get back to you uh, as soon as tomorrow with an answer. Okay. If and it's not, it's time. okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. You have a great day.
Okay, Joe. Bye. And uh, we got, oh, Robin Harrison. Sorry, it's actually Stephanie. I'm just. Oh, okay. I'm game on. Yeah, one sec. Okay, now it's me. And you get some video too. Okay. Hey, hey Stephanie. Hi there. Uh, thank you for joining us today. It's a beautiful picture in the background. Is well, thank you. Yeah. Um, are you ready to jump right into this? Sure. Okay. Um, first question. Please introduce yourself and let us know why you like to be on the Parks Commission. Well, I'm Stephanie Lyle, the director of the Harbor History Museum and a city resident. Uh, I have long been interested in parks, you know, both in on the local level and on the national level. And uh, actually did a project on um, the Homestead Brothers when I worked at Shelburne Farms in Vermont. And um, so there's a lot of interesting crossovers in terms of historic sites and parks and open space. So I, um, in addition to my work at the museum, uh, parks and, and actually forestry has also been a really important uh, part of my study area and in personal interest area. Thank you. All right, Stephanie, I'm glad to hear that you're a city resident. I did not, I didn't know that. I wasn't sure. Yeah, I am. Awesome. awesome. Okay. My question is, do you have any knowledge of the Parks Commission and its role? I have some, yes. I, <laughs> some from personal experience, uh, some from just interacting with some of the great people that are on the Parks Commission and have been on the, on the Parks Commission. I've also worked with the Arts Commission in relationship to some of, of the art projects and interpretive projects in the parks. So um, are you asking me to tell you what I know or are you just, oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, just kind of let us know, you know, how it works, kind of your, the role. Yeah, well, I understand how commissions work. I do serve on the lodging tax committee as well. And um, I'm not 100% sure how the parks commission works because I think each commission uh, has, you know, its special role, but um, I have been involved in some of the parks commission meetings and, and listened in on a number of those and, uh, you know, tried to provide some background material where it was uh, requested. So I have uh, a, a fairly good knowledge of how at least city uh, commissions work. Yeah. Hi, Stephanie, Jenny here. Um, what is your favorite Gig Harbor Park? Mm. Why? And how can it be improved? Well, that's interesting. I have to say that uh, probably my, I would be wrong to say that Crescent Valley Park wasn't my favorite because I grew up going to that park. I live just up the hill and around the corner. And so I spent a lot of time at that park over the years playing softball in the ball field there, um, you know, down by the creek, watching the fish come in. Uh, picnicking in the shelter there and of course watching the kids project get built and then the cool sculpture out of the old tree so um, there's just some really really cool things and great memories there and then couple that with the volleyball courts and which um, when I lived in Los Angeles I played a lot of beach volleyball so it was really awesome to see the sand courts go in at that site as well and of course I'm really interested in the historic structure of the old Masonic Hall aka Crescent Valley School uh, and um, kind of what's happening with that and seeing the city get involved in saving some of these historic structures. So that probably is my favorite, although it's hard to pick a favorite because there's a lot of really cool parks and I really am excited about the city's investment in each of those properties. Could it be improved? Do you see a way for Crescent Creek Park to be improved? Oh, I definitely think that there is room for improvement in terms of access to the park. One of the things that has always been a little bit, um, uh, I'm going to say trepidatious, <laughs> uh, is getting to the park for kids on bikes, walking. It's not that easy to access that park. And so sidewalks, um, just to get to it would be a vast improvement. And I mean, from at the top of the hill, like from Crescent Valley Drive down. And then um, also seeing work done on the building there so that the public can use it uh, would be a really cool thing. And, and 
um, restoring some of the, the original features of that building uh, as it appeared when it was a school, I think would be a nice touch. So have you been inside the park since it was a, a lodge for the Masonic group of people? It's, you know, it's probably been 20 years since I've been inside of that building. I have been inside of it when it was, and from my distant memory, there was some theater seating in the space. It was a little bit mystical when we were in there because it was <laughs> Not quite like the uh, um, the temple in downtown Tacoma, but uh, but definitely had a, a a mystical flair to it. So, yeah. Okay. Thank you very much. Sure. And Stephanie, what do you feel are the major issues the Parks Commission should be focusing on? I think that part of the, and and I will just say part of the reason why I was interested in in coming onto the Parks Commission, whether you think this is a good thing or not, is your choice. But um, I I think it's um, it, I think that the historic character of many of the parks and the structures in the parks, having a, um, a preservation plan and an interpretive plan for those historic structures would be one of the things that I would like to really see happen on, in greater detail. And that doesn't necessarily mean a bunch more um, interpretive signs or plaques everywhere. It means you know a thoughtful review and interpretive overall arching sort of plan for um, how the parks are actually um, presented. So, and I have to confess, Spencer, I sort of spaced on your question. Could you repeat it? <laughs> Certainly. Uh, get back to it. What do you feel are the major issues of the oh. Parks Commission should be focusing? Okay, thank you. Um, well, certainly historic preservation, it would be one of the, the top two in my, um, in my purview, obviously, that's an area that I am, I'm pretty invested in, but also looking at how do you make these parks accessible to the public uh, is, an, is another part of that. So obviously historic structures and then uh, making a priority to find ways to both interpret those historic structures and the sites that they're on, uh, as well as do the preservation work that needs to be done to make that all possible. So. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay, Stephanie, the Parks Commission meets the first Wednesday of every month. Do you have any other obligations that would prevent you from attending these meetings? Not at this time. I have meetings on Tuesdays and Thursdays, but not yet on Wednesdays, so fill it up. <laughs> <laughs> and I have a last question for you. Do you have anything you would like to add about parks or do you have any questions for us about the Parks Commission? Well, uh, I do, yeah. I think uh, one of the things that I'm really impressed with is the efforts on preserving the forest land, the sort of kitty corner from the museum and Donkey Creek Park and expanding up along North Creek there. I think that's really awesome. So I'm really excited to see how that evolves. And I'd really like to be a part of that conversation and, and that, that process. Um, but I'm also curious from your perspective, what would the priorities for the parks be? I know Ben's been on the Park Commission for a long time and other folks have been involved and it would just be interesting to hear from you what you would think like your top two priorities would be. So I, I will go with a visioning plan for uh, Crescent Creek Park and what our community would like to see done with that historic building and, and what we can do with it. I think that's important. So I will mention that one. I think I'm going to oh. defer to Ben on this because yeah. he, he knows this more than anybody. I, I, I personally would like to see the Cushman Trail, um, you know, completed and, and you know, maybe even go further and, and really connect it to some neighborhoods and shopping centers and stuff like that and schools and, you know, better connectivity through the community. You know, that's kind of, I feel like, you know, transportation has been an issue for, you know, some years now. And so that, you know, is a possibility to leave some of that. I think that's a great idea. Yeah. yeah. And I, I would like to see um, handicap uh, tables that allow handicap uh, accessibility. I saw uh, on my journeys, elongated tables that didn't have any kind of bench or, anything that a person with a wheelchair could just pull right up to. And that way they feel included with um, whatever the birthday party or celebration is, is going on. Uh, and maybe uh, some concrete paths that allow them access instead of having to go over the grass. Um, Cause you know, it can get muddy out and things like that and people get stuck. And then uh, I'd just like to see some stretching opportunities around town um, in our parks where people could walk to and then just 
and pull their back muscles and spine and all those kind of things. I think are really nice. And then a viewing platform. Mm -hmm. I've always advocated for. Uh, we have all these beautiful views, and unless you're very wealthy and have access to a taller building in town, you don't get to see them. And uh, I've seen a couple of nice viewing platforms across the country where they're very easy to climb. And I hate stairs. Uh, and I was willing to climb up them, and uh, they gave opportunities to see a good vista. Mm -hmm. Taking advantage of that sound and mountain and sunsets, and you have a tree level. Yeah. So thank you for asking that question. Yeah, uh, I'll just add that, as Stephanie, as you know, I'm very interested, as, as is the whole council, I believe. Um, seems like they're very supportive of some land conservation efforts in critical areas. And a number of those areas are really close to the museum. <laughs> so I could, you know, I, I think your voice on that is really, um, really valuable. Thank you. Yeah. Debbie, do you have anything else you want to leave us with? Well, I think that one of the, the things for me is that, you know, I like to say anything is possible, even when it seems impossible. <laughs> but I, I, I think about what we can do to preserve our, you know, natural environment, and still have viewing opportunities, still have beautiful art installations. You know, there's a lot of really cool opportunities that we have, and obviously, a parks are a wonderful canvas for that. And you know, the museum would love to be a part of that. And it's and me personally, as a citizen. I would like to be a part of that too. And I, I know that there have been times when people are concerned that I am singularly minded about the museum, but I will say that the Historical Society uh, serves all of the, the city as well as beyond that. And so my perspective is looking, you know, in a broader way, not just, you know, what, what relates directly to history and the history museum stuff, but um, kind of how do we interpret our whole area and use the parks as a cool canvas to be able to do that. So that's that's kind of where I'll leave you. Yeah. Well, thank you for your time today. We have two candidates uh, spots that we need to fill um, and we will be getting back to you by tomorrow. Josh will be reaching out with you with an answer. Okay. So thank you for your time this afternoon. Yeah, thank you. I know it's a busy day today, so I appreciate your time. Yeah, <laughs> thank Stephanie, you. thanks. Thanks, All Stephanie. Right. Take care. Good yeah. to see y'all. Bye. Bye-bye. And our last participant, Stacey Gordon. He was on a moment ago. We'll see when he yeah. pops back on here. And uh, just in case this video, or the video doesn't pop up, is Stacy a male or a female doing that? Male. Got it. Thank you. I guess I should say Mr. or Mrs. Stacy or Stace? Stace. Stace. Okay. There we go. Thank you, Mr. Gordon, for joining us today. Thank you. Uh, please call me Stace. Thank you. That was going to be my next question, Stace. Um, my name is Spencer Abersold, Council Member Abersold. Um, if you're ready, we can jump right in. Absolutely. Excellent, sir. Thank you. Uh, Stace, tell us, uh, please introduce yourself and let us know why you'd like to be on the Parks Commission. All right. I've, uh, I've been in a gig harbor area about six years, I guess, moved here from Portland and been on the West Coast about 20 years or more and uh but grew up in florida on the east coast uh probably first got my love for the outdoors as a an eagle scout in the everglades of florida and dodging the alligators and things and uh and since then i've just always uh, been an outdoors person and uh and i'm nearing retirement in a few couple months and uh, i was looking for a way to get more involved with the city and, and the community and a way to uh, give back a little bit to gig harbor really gotten anchored here and uh and we really i spend as much time as i can on the water and around the water and in the in the woods and things so i just thought it'd be i saw the notice that you were looking for folks to get involved in the parks and i thought this would be a great opportunity for me to to just lend my uh you know perspective and help as much as i can i've been doing uh, human resources 
the last 25 years or so. And so uh, currently working as a HR manager for <clears throat> the uh, West Rock Paper Mill here in downtown Tacoma. And so I'm uh, used to working with all kinds of different folks and working on all kinds of different issues and negotiating uh, compromises. And so I thought it uh, might be a good chance to, to just get more involved and contribute. Thank you, sir. Hey, great. Well, Stace, I grew up in Florida too, but I'm North Central Florida, Gainesville area. Sounds like you were South. <laughs> well, I was a I was a Gator for a couple of years, and Yay, then like, the migrated north. Gainesville is a fabulous place, and uh, but yeah, I grew up in uh, Daytona Beach as a young kid, and then Miami as a teenager. Yeah. Hey, Daytona is not far from us. <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah. My question is: Do you have any knowledge of the Parks Commission and its role? I really don't. I'm curious as to, uh, you know, what its mission is and, you know, how large a group is it? I'm not sure if you're trying to fill one or, or 10 vacancies. Uh, so I don't know much. Okay. Uh, hi, Stas. I'm Jenny Wook sitting on the council. Nice to meet you today. Great to meet you. Um, I have a question for you. What is your favorite Gig Harbor City Park? Why? And what can, how can it be improved? How can it be improved? That's always a great question. Um, you know, I, I lived pretty close to uh, uh, Crescent Creek Park until recently, and then just, uh, just moved uh, just a few miles away. So that's probably the park I'm most familiar with. Uh, we have some uh, friends and we're the, the godparents of their children. So we've taken them there to play on all the, swings and uh, toys and things a few times so um, I think just in terms of the, the facilities at that park are really great all different kinds of facilities and obviously the folks love the volleyball uh, field that's uh, you know occupied that seems you know good better good weather or poor and uh, so that's probably my favorite park and the most diverse park it seems can it be improved is there anything you can think of to improve it uh, nothing struck me right off, you know, the top of my mind of, you know, this is really a weakness or what have you. I, I can't think of something in that vein. I'm sure there's always some a new cool piece of equipment or, or more uh, facilities for picnic tables and barbecues and things that you could, you know, would get lots of use. Um, but uh, I, I, nothing that jumps out that's, I think, a burning issue. All right. Thank you. And Stace, what do you feel are the major issues the Parks Commission should be focusing on? Well, I think parks are interesting in that regardless of your opinion on all kinds of controversies, most everyone likes parks. It's probably the least controversial thing. And I think uh, people really enjoy parks, even if they themselves don't spend a lot of time in parks. They love the fact that they're you know, part of the community. You drive past them, you see people having a nice time. And so I think from that standpoint, uh, the city always has a budget, a limit, and you know, not unlimited resources, of course, but how can you maximize uh, those various facilities that benefit the most people possible? And uh, I think you, you know, it's always sort of a win if you can uh, spend more uh, effort and energy and, and, and resources on parks, uh, balancing that with all the other demands, of course, of running any community. Thank you. Very good. Okay, this is an easy one. The Parks Commission meets monthly on the first Wednesday at 5.30 p.m. Do you have any other commitments that would keep you from attending these meetings? No, I currently don't. And in a couple of months, I'll, even, I'll have even fewer commitments. So. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Well, there's lots of opportunities to volunteer in Gig Harbor, so you can, uh, you can keep yourself as busy as you'd like to be. So good. Stace, good. I have one last question for you. Sure. Do you have anything you'd like to add about your interest in parks or about parks? Or do you have any questions for us about the Parks Commission? Um, yeah, I guess my question would be, you know, if, fast forward a year from now, if the Parks Commission that you envisioned did a great job, what would they have accomplished that helps you run the city? more effectively? What are you looking for from that commission to add value? 
So I'm going to add one thing right here, uh, and we just completed, and I don't know if you had the opportunity to, to answer the survey, but we are, are working on a pros plan, um, recreation and open space and public spaces. And, and I'm looking uh, myself, I'm really excited about the pros plan, and I'm looking to see what the Parks Commission does. Uh, the citizens and community answered lots of questions, said what was important to them. So I, I'm looking really to see the recommendations that come out of the Parks Commission, what the Parks Commission heard from our citizens. Okay, okay. So digest that information. I'm not, I'm not sure I have anything to add to that. That was a great Great answer from Council Member Wook. We need to take what the citizens want and make sure that you guys have to keep Council on track to make sure we're remembering what they want and that we are we're we're following that directive. Okay. Okay. Great. Yeah, I would just echo Council Member Wook. Um, so, Stace, if there's anything else you want to add, uh, this would be the time to do so. I guess how large is the commission that when it's fully staffed, the parks commission? What is it, seven members, Ben? Yeah, it is the seven members. Seven. Yeah. Okay. We're, we have two within the, or seven total, and then two are allowed to live within the uh, urban growth area, and then five ideal, I mean, allowed up to two within the urban growth area. So you don't necessarily have to be a resident, but you can live within the UGA. So. And so Stace, we're interviewing today for two positions that are open uh, to be filled. And then uh, after we um, leave with you, we will be discussing recommendations for those positions and we will have an answer for you uh, sometime tomorrow. Josh will reach out and let you know where we're at. Oh, great, okay. Not wasting any time. <laughs> and so then we wanna thank you again for your time today. Well, I thank you. I really appreciate you taking a few minutes to get to meet me and uh, for me to meet you and uh, look forward to hearing from you. It's been our pleasure, sir. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Thanks, thank you. Congratulations Bye -bye. on your impending retirement. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Thank you very much. Appreciate that. Good afternoon. Thank you. He'd be a good volunteer with Harbor Wild Watch, too. You know, we could keep him busy all over town. <laughs> Great, great personality. Yeah, totally. He'd be an asset to a lot of groups. So uh, do we want to nominate two people at once or one at a time? How do you want to handle it? Go for it, Jenny. Uh, I, I, I want everyone to know that I am a, a reference for um, Stephanie Lyle. And I would also like to nominate Stephanie for one of our appointed positions on the on the Parks Commission. I second okay. that. And then all in favor say aye. 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 I agree with and that. And then I would like to nominate Georgina Armstrong for the second position. And it's really hard because these were all great candidates. I think they all would have done a great job. But the fact that Georgina has already read the pros plan and has been so thoughtful, even though she's new in the community, that kind of blew me away in her experience with um, with forestry and I loved how she connected non-motorized transportation and trails a lot of the things that that our citizens have told us are important and she's and she she lives in um, Heron's Key too which I also think is really a neat community that we hear more from so I'd like to nominate her for that second position. I will second that nomination I was very impressed by her. I was very impressed by her and I certainly support her Somebody help me get over the fact that she's only been here five months. I know that is hard. That is hard. Maybe well, Ben, Ben, how can you help me get over that? I mean, I'm going <laughs> to probably vote for her anyway, but give me help. <laughs> <laughs> that was, I was looking at her you know, submission. I was like, that was the only thing that kind of stood out to me. I mean, she had, you know, letters of reference and everything. Yeah. In there. Heron's key. And then she seemed to be pretty involved down in Carmel, California too. So, you know, she brings a lot of experience, I think too. Um, you know, I mean, so does Amanda though, working with Penn Met Parks, you know, that's something we've been struggling to do is kind of work, you know, in cohesion mm -hmm. with them and, you know, making sure that, you know, the community really gets what it needs, like in a holistic ap approach. And then Joe Buckley with the, um, you know, the landscape architecture experience, you know, that's also a useful one to have on the Parks Commission. 
So yes, it's a very difficult decision this time. Um, but yeah. Correct me if I'm wrong, Ben, but I, hasn't Georgina come and spoken at the last two Parks Commission meetings? She has, she has, yeah. They, yeah. She's trying to get some progress done with the um, shop, shop park there, so. Yeah, and I've actually, she's reached out to me on a number of different parks and public works issues. Um, she's interested in conservation. I know she's got some things going with Shaw Park that she's promoting. She's interested in park maintenance and has asked me really, really educated questions about our budget and the progression of amount of money we've spent in parks. And, you know, she wants enough resources for our park. She's very, very smart. And and she told me, you know, at another conversation that she really feels like there's a lot of similarities between Carmel and some of the challenges and Carmel and Gig Harbor and some of the challenges both communities have navigated or are navigating through. So I know, I wish she'd been here a lot longer, Judy, but. <laughs> well, I'm going to vote for her anyway, but, but because she's just outstanding. Uh, but is, do, do you see a, any problem with five months, Ben? I mean, it, it's short, you know, that would, some more roots would be nice, but I mean, if this is where she's chosen to retire and, you know, sees, you know, as foreseeable future, but I mean, that's the, I mean, the year is the same standard you guys are held to, if that's anything that you have to have a year of residency. Yeah. And, so. and I loved your idea, um, Jenny, about referring Joseph Buckley to possibly consider the design review board because we have been looking at exactly yes. that. <laughs> yes, yes, we need, we, him. We, need that. That. we need that experience on the design review board. Yeah, you guys had a lot of really, really good. I mean, we had a really, lot of really good applicants this time. I feel like there was. Well, I mean, <laughs> these positions tend to come up a lot, so I would just say to these other folks, come, come back again. And in terms of Penn Met, you know, I know the Parks Commission has always tried, maybe not as hard as we should have, to connect with Penn Met, and you know, I think we need to do that with either joint meetings or checking in once or twice a year with them. Um, so I think we can do that kind of colleague, or you guys can do that kind of colleague to colleague. Mm -hmm. I think that that's an effective way of getting that voice. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, I, I, I would support that for sure. Um, you know, she brought a lot of good qualities and knowledge and I mean, with the forest management plan and, you know, maintenance of the parks. And so, I mean, that's a lot of things we heard in the you know, community surveys and stuff like that. So thank you. So we have a second on that. Do we need, let's take a vote for Georgina. All in favor, say aye. 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 Excellent. Then our two nominations will be uh, Georgina Armstrong and Stephanie Lyle to the Parks Commission. And Josh, I believe you will be reaching out to them, but then also we'll report this this evening if they're listening. And can you maybe reach out to Joe Buckley and see if he's interested in the DRB? Yep, I'll have a talk with him about it. Okay. Yeah. And these appointments will be made on January 10th, which is the next time council will meet. As always, encourage all these folks to apply again or, or look at other boards because they were all, all wonderful. Yes, all good. If we have no further business at this time, uh, motion to adjourn. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you, everybody. Hi, guys. How's it going? Hi, Ben.